Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. Frankenstein Control is brought to you tonight by Blue Steel Razors. Uh, for a little background, uh, so recently, uh, a popular brand of razors and other personal grooming products released an ad that some people extrapolated a surprisingly controversial uh, message from. Oh. Uh, not sure why. I didn't expect people to get as angry as they did over something so innocuous, but uh, anyhow, it seems that a few uh, enterprising but lesser known brands of shaving equipment are hoping in the wake of the promised boycotts many have threatened uh, because of the ad, that uh, now is their chance to annex some of the market. <laughs> Uh, Blue Steel Razors is uh, one of these companies, and they've given me a paid statement to read on the air tonight so we can keep the lights on. Okay. Right. Uh, we'll take anyone's money after all. We're broke millennials. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here it goes. Hello. This is a message from your friends at Blue Steel Razors. By now, we're sure you've all seen the ad our competitors released, which established on no uncertain terms their feelings about certain aspects of our culture. They want to suggest that some among us should expend a minuscule amount of effort to be slightly less terrible towards others when convenient, and that being an asshole isn't the same thing as strength. Uh, if you were one of the evidently thousands of American men who reacted to this message by saying, How fucking goddamn dare you, you beta soy boy shits, uh, then we want to say, Welcome to Blue Steel Razors. Founded in 1849 by Samuel Chamberlain, Blue Steel is one of America's oldest brands of male grooming products. Uh, during the Civil War, many distinguished gentlemen and officers relied upon our razors to style the ridiculous fucking facial hair they all had back then. Uh, you know, the massive bushy chop stashes that made them all look uh, like their faces were shoved halfway through a toilet seat. <laughs> we did that. That's good. Uh, in particular, uh, Lieutenant General Nathan Bedford Forrest is said to never have gone into massacre without a blue steel shave from his favorite involuntarily employed camp staff member. He relied upon the trusted precision he knew it offered to maintain the carefully devised cosplay of Satan which constituted his entire personality, <laughs> and uh, that precision remains true to this day. Uh, for more than 170 years, traditionally masculine, history-making men have come home from a hard day's work, washed off the caked blood of dangerous enemy children, and refreshed themselves with a close shave from a blue steel razor. Isn't it time to repeat history? <laughs> oh, no! Blue steel razors. The best a seething, hate-filled, point-missing garbage boy can get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bravo! That, that's, that's a good one. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a good... Commercial. Thanks, Blue Steel. We're going to use that 13 cents wisely. Oh! Taylor, you dropped it. It's gone. It went right down, down the grate. It went down the storm drain. They mailed that to me along with my sample of Blue Steel razors, which I only cut myself 15 times on. Oh, I, uh, I was wondering why you were coated in lacerations. Yeah, it's m more than the normal amount of lacerations. It's because you're not man enough. Yeah. Too much of a soy boy. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, uh, th thank you for that commercial break, b Uh Now to begin the show, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Frankenstein Control. What, um, what y'all brought up to? Um, uh, nothing much. I did realize, though, that, uh, this is actually our second anniversary episode. What? For real? Yeah. What? Yeah, this, <laughs> we've been doing this for pretty much exactly two years. What the, this point. For, 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 for some, blah, what? Ah! Uh, yeah, I'll be back. I gotta make some calls. He uh, probably forgot to pay his car insurance bill again. Yeah, he he still hasn't paid me rent. <laughs> yeah, I, he uh, does owe me. I've been wondering when you were gonna address that issue with him. Yeah. I mean, you've been remarkably patient. Yes. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I came through the vent. <laughs> Did you get the 13 cents on your way through? Uh, that, uh, well, the other vent, the ceiling vent. Ah. I'm very stealthy when in a ceiling, and that's the only time I am. You're okay. also covered in asbestos. That is also true. Is that any different from normal, though? It's slightly more than the normal amount of asbestos he's always got tangled up in his beard. Yeah. Well, uh, so I made some calls, and uh, yeah, guys, we're good. Cool. Good for what? Good, uh, what, what do you mean? You know, for Who'd you call? It's our anniversary, so I called the regulars. 
The ring it's the, the Frankenstein Control! Second Anniversary Spectacular! Starring... Beefman 5000, Ada the Space Princess, and as always, the ghost of a scarecrow. Musical guest, Barry Manilow, Donnie the Flavor Hound, and Adam Sandler is here too to perform his hit song, Sporadic Yelling, off his new album, I Had a Stroke in 2011 and Nobody's Gotten Me Help. And tonight's host, Rip Torn, which one of you assholes hit my tequila? Alcoholism wasn't a funny joke! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Do you think he's okay? I, I don't... I, he's not moving anymore. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Granted, he wasn't moving when we found him, either, but... I'm, fr I'm fucking alive! <laughs> <laughs> no, I took care of him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I called him. <laughs> I mean, thought... most parties need a crazy, fat, bearded, drunken man, and you can't do it all the time, Taylor. <laughs> you gotta think of your health. Yeah. I mean, his is already shot, so. You needed a break. So. I did. I needed a brief beard break. Yes, thank you for taking that little bit of self-care for yourself. Ah! Every time you call him, he, he, he always says it's not gonna be like it was last time, and it's the same every time. He just, he <laughs> falls down the endless fucking stairs and smashes a bunch of shit, and then screams profanities, and then, you know, the other thing. You did break my Amy Winehouse commemorative plate collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are going to be worth something someday. I know. Now they're on the floor. Just like, like Rip. <laughs> rip, rip. <laughs> rip, rip. Rip in peace. <laughs> ah, what a time it is to be here in our in our ballroom gala ball place. Mm -hmm. Ball still, pit. In our gala ball pit. <laughs> still as empty as it was uh, 19 episodes ago. That's true. <laughs> It was only 19 episodes? Yep. Wow. Oh, boy. Which makes this episode 69. It's the sex joke number oh! episode. Oh! Kick the music in again. Nice, 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 nice. It's the Frankenstein Control 69 special. Special guest. <laughs> what? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Peter, you look so enthused. You didn't think you would look happier than uh, when you're getting your dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I can <laughs> You go to hell? Ah! Oh, it's Yukon! <laughs> it's the second callback we've had. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he went to hell. For sucking too much dick. Well, sucking B-Rice dick. Mm. That's the only dick you go to hell for. I'm very uncomfortable with this line. B-Rice sent him to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a batezu. I have that power, so don't make me use it. <laughs> That's true. Let's move on. Hey, it's been two years and two dicks in the mouth since last time we did this special. We're going to celebrate a whole another year of Frankenstein control. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, no, 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 if you listen to this point in the podcast, write in the comments. I'm going to keep listening. Cue the montage of our greatest hits, which is all of the yelling and coughing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just all the times that's happened over the last two years. <laughs> the coughing montage. And who could forget... <laughs> <laughs> And how many times did we hear this little chestnut? Ah! Ooh, my prostate! <laughs> <coughs> I'm not editing, editing this call, so I'll be right. <laughs> no, it's our, it, this is our highlight reel. Mm -hmm. Welcome. L welcome to all the uncomfortable noises we make. <laughs> no. Stop. <laughs> that wasn't a dick sucking noise. It was just a noise. I didn't like it. <laughs> it's it, it's our new ASMR channel. Ugh. Somebody at work today, um, I just heard someone yell from the, the break room, what is ASMR? And I was like, you are not ready for the answer to that question. <laughs> You're not um, ready for the asthma to that question. Yeah, no. We, we ain't going down that one. And then you whisper deeply in their ear. Yeah. yeah. Say, come here, I'll tell you. You get right in their ears. Just as we're when you're speaking really closely to the mic, and it gives a very distinct feeling. 
it was a spine tingly sensation. And you walked up real close again, and you were like, I, "Your ear smells like bacon." <laughs> and you know, I just went. <laughs> oh, I got all tingly! Wow! <laughs> your gross boyfriend burps in your ear ASMR. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that hails back to one of our what, what was it like? I think it was episode first, seven. Really, it was uh, you're good with numbers. At least in the I, very I first make them. <laughs> At least in the very first ten, that was our episode. Was it Mr. Bean ASMR? Uh, or was it Jimmy Carter? Oh, it was Jimmy, it Carter, was Jimmy Carter, Carter ASMR. ASMR. Yes. Build a house around this man. <laughs> but then we did a bunch of other ASMR jokes that with it, or maybe in the episodes coinciding. Yeah. I think we did like Sean Bean <laughs> ASMR one episode. <laughs> Is it like all of his? Death? Which turned into Mr. Bean yeah. ASMR. Okay, now we're on the right track. See, here at Frankenstein Control, we don't keep track of our own jokes, or at least I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite positive because I have that brain disorder uh, called severe crippling insomnia for half my life. Uh, that I've told the same stories and jokes on here at least once or twice. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've told them other places in my life, so I can never remember if it was on here or not. So I'm always like, I fucking told this story before. This is just going to be an episode where I repeat myself. <laughs> and someone who bothers to do so is going to link this. Who's the same fucking story he told in episode 53? And then, yeah. First of all, just... I'd like to say thank you for having such a good, for being such a good fan. Yeah. For remembering that we're repeating ourselves. Mm. Thank you. Before I lose the thought, I want to say uh, that Sean Bean ASMR is just uh, <laughs> really close, like, Spine tingling, you know, sound effects of that he makes when he dies in all the movies he's died in, like you know, Boromir's dying gasp and uh, I, I would have followed you anywhere, my, my brother, king. my king, <laughs> or his famous last words in Game of Thrones. Yep. Oh, Thud. My God, I I gotta say something on that subject of that. As a man who very clearly lives for his fantasy escapism and uh, loves all manner of books and sci-fi and especially medieval fantasy and video games and all that fun shit, uh, kind of breaks my heart how not excited at all I am for the huge premiere of the season of Game of Thrones that's coming out that everyone's talking about and asking me about. I'm like, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care, and I haven't seen any of the previous three or four seasons because they've completely run roughshod all over the books (laughs) that I liked, which are much better. And it's just like, hey, what if we very quickly outpaced the books, took out the coolest characters and scenes, and replaced them with a bunch of needless rape? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And what if we had rapes that don't even happen in the books? And one character that doesn't even know another character in the books rapes them in the show. What if we did that? In the next season of Game of Thrones, Tyrion gets raped by the rewrites. Whoa! Fucking Mm. topical! Also, what if your favorite thing becomes uh, part and parcel for every fucking normie you know? (laughs) I know he said it sounded like every normie and ho. (laughs) <laughs> you know what? You can interpret it however you like. The derision is intended the same. Ah, d- d- beer I seems mm. you have a very high opinion of that show. Yeah, I I kind of did when it started. I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, they're glossing over some of the things I liked. Now well, they're doing it more. How's it feel that J.R.R. Martin George Tolkien ain't ever going to write the last book? Uh, he's probably not. He's probably going to pull a Robert Jordan. You know what? You know what? He's going to pull a Michael Jordan? He's going to dunk. You know fucking what? He's the basketball. If with they suspenders. just no, no, I'm talking over you because you're stupid. <laughs> if if they just straight up did the same, I just said he pulled. A, he's gonna pull a Robert Jordan. Robert Jordan is the author of the Wheel of Time series, who uh, famously died before. Oh, you know, he had the selfishness to go and fucking die. Well, he got run over by the Wheel of Time. Yes. Um, in which case they had uh, a then lesser-known author named Brandon Sanderson step into the role and finish the Wheel of Time series. Ah, I knew you were going to segue and into this somehow. See, if they just went ahead and just said, you know what, we're going to alternate universe, we're going to Rick and Morty this shit, and anyone who likes the TV show can assume the stories end that way, and if you like the books of A Song of Ice and Fire, we're just going to have Brandon Sanderson pick up the series where George R. R. Martin feels like leaving off, <laughs> and we'd have a much better ending. Now, you can't pick that up. The magic system in Song of Ice and Fire is too loose. But Sanderson's all about that hard magic. There ain't so much magic uh, in uh, Song of Ice and Fire actual as there is hitting people with swords. I just imagine Sanderson being like, 
you you hit them with with the sword but like do you swallow any kind of inanimate object to make it turn into a flamingo that's on fire <laughs> is, is there any in canon reason for a person to have a giant ass anime sword and wield it realistically because that needs to change immediately if there's not can he touch a brick a couple of times and then it flies out of the wall and smashes through a man <laughs> because if not that needs to change because if none of this has happened in Game of Thrones, I, I, I mean, I got some work to do. B- Bernie Sanderson, 2019. Sandin, Sandin Branderson. <laughs> um, I've yet to read Mistborn or Stormlight Archives, but it's on my to-do list of... Uh, when the hell do I ever have time to read anymore? I'm too busy almost playing Kingdom Hearts. It's coming out soon. That's my that's my highbrow literature, be right. Well, I'm looking forward to that as and well. You know what? They ain't going to have any fucking rape in it. I hope not. Hug or sore, I got other ideas. <laughs> Donald's like... <laughs> well, let me tell you about the aftermath of the My Lai Massacre. No! Yep. <laughs> They'd look the other way. That's the true darkness in the Kingdom Hearts. Oh, yuck. Yep. <laughs> it's goofy. It's a good thing we're recording two episodes tonight, because the uh, if it comes out next week, on a oh. Tuesday, oh. we will be recording. And I assume by that point, you will just be in a cocoon. <laughs> Some kind of Taylor Russell cocoon. Wow, yeah, the very next day, because I refuse to stand at the midnight release. Absolutely no fucking way. Yeah. No way. I'm not standing out in the cold with a bunch of fucking weebs. I'm all, I already hate being around myself. <laughs> what, you, what you need to say is, I'm not standing out in the cold with a bunch of fucking weebs. Again. <laughs> For the twelfth time. Well, the only time I've ever done that was the midnight release of uh, f- Skyrim. Is the only midnight release I've ever been to. And that was only because my homeboy, J. May, was there, and he was screaming, cheese! And it was funny. Yeah. And it was a good time. But then some people came dressed as, like, Dover Kings, and I was like, okay, you ain't even played the game yet, you sure you need to be dressing up? Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to go. Actually, I want to go to the midnight release, and I want to be uh, in like. Have you guys ever seen that really scary, goofy cosplay that guy did with like the at- prosthetic makeup? And yes, he, and he looks like he's from a horror movie. Yes, I know what you mean. I, I haven't them. seen that, and I'm kind of gl- oh wait, maybe you I don't, have. You don't want to see. I it. think I remember recalling a repressed memory here. I have you can probably that. Google folks at home if you want nightmares tonight. Just go ahead, and Google goofy realistic makeup, and it'll probably show up. Let's hope not. <laughs> anyway, and yeah, I'm excited for that. But we can talk about that. After Do you I want play. to dress up as that? Yes, I, want to, I want to dress up as makeup goofy. Mm. <laughs> and just be like, Gorsh, pal, are you waiting in line for the new game too? <laughs> and I'd be like, <gasps> I'm like, you sure do look like Sora. I used to tell him to stories about the Ted Offensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, that's why we need v Ride to be goofy. Because oh. he's already tall and he can yeah. be Donald. No, I could be Pete. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, that needs to happen. Gore Sora, I had a hallucination about bathing in the ocean to cover up my memories of the Sabra and Shatila massacre. Oh, yuck. That's, that's the plot of Waltz with Bashir. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that movie that happened. Mm-hmm. That's that, that Israeli it's, animated war movie that I actually have wanted to see for like a fucking decade and can't find anywhere. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, the t- you know why? Because you, uh, something clever. <laughs> Gore Sora, no one even knows about the Lebanon War now. Oh. We fought in a forgotten conflict. Oh my which God. means we did our job. Oh dear. Speaking of violent war things, <laughs> uh. A black Ops unit, Sora. <laughs> you, mean, you mean a Heartless Ops unit? Oh, you know what I said? <laughs> Sound like you caught Cornelius a little bit by yeah. the end there. Uh, Steven sent me some picture that I think was from an actual Chinese history book Mm -hmm. of, like, the old-style portrait art that, like, I don't know how else to describe it, but, like, you know, old pictures of, uh, because they they obviously didn't have photos in, like, you know, ancient China, so they had these same kind of, like, samurai paintings and that kind of thing. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, those old-style paintings. Yeah. Ink, ink, and watercolors. It was meant to be an old... Uh, like actual likeness of the real Lubu, mm-hmm. and he said it to me. And the spear was very similar oh. to what he actually they put in the game. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
I'm noticing an absence of the hat. <laughs> so the hat is nowhere near as grossly exaggerated in this. So I was like, clearly you need to draw that into this book before you return it to whatever <laughs> library or, you know, <laughs> educational historical society this book belongs to. You need to draw in You're the hat. You're helping the children learn, Stephen. And uh, his response was he wanted to, you know, turn it into a flip book where the hat of progressing pages, the hat gradually rises uh. up. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, there's no escape, as you and I both know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't bring him in here. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> said. Uh, there's, like, Chinese text, and it's, tra- it's like, from the time it was translated as, Don't bring him in here. <laughs> uh, speaking of Sanderson again, I'm, um, I'm quite sure. He's young enough that there's no way he's not influenced by video games and anime. If you, mm-hmm. if you actually read, like, an action scene of his... And I'm quite sure that he developed the uh, in in the Stormlight Archive the concept of uh, shard blade and shard plate and the wielders of those objects. I'm pretty sure he was like, what would it look like realistically if a person was a Dynasty Wars character in actual war? You <laughs> 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 like, just slice through ten identical men and they all layer over each other, going oh 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 oh. <laughs> While butt rock plays in the yeah. background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last good game was eight. Yeah. Nine sucks a hot and holy dick. <laughs> it's bad. Mm. They made it open world in the worst way. Oh, that doesn't. And they took away Zheng He's claws. Why though? Those were cool. Oh, is that the one where they gave him a spear for no reason? They gave him like a ball and chain or some shit. Why would he have a ball and chain? Exactly, because just nobody fucking cares anymore. Except for Square Enix, because they finally made Kingdom Hearts 3, and the next week, this just in, Kingdom Hearts 3, rated worst game ever. <laughs> Fallout 70, this makes Fallout 76 look like game of the year. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I honestly am surprised that Kingdom Hearts 2 is, uh, or 3, or whichever the fuck one it Kingdom is. Kingdom 3 over 2 over 9,800 days. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 76 is uh, coming out next week because I, I just that somehow escaped me and um, it'll probably be a while before I, I get to play it because I'm, I'm still playing um, Red Dead right and, uh, which is kind of like Kingdom Hearts yeah <laughs> Sora <laughs> Miss McFarlane <laughs> who's not in Red Dead too oh yeah that's right it's in the past yeah so it's a young John yeah it's, it's a younger John and uh, Arthur, Arthur Morgan but anyhow, Arthur Morg. Um, I lost, lost where I was going with that. You're talking about you're going to play, get your shot. Kingdom yeah. Hearts Three is finally coming out. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have to um, wait a while before I play that and and play uh, Kingdom Hearts and also um, you know d- do the the school work that I'm currently engaged in for a degree that I'm yeah. working towards, which is probably slightly more important than playing. Uh, <laughs> Maybe kind of. It's kind of debatable. A little bit. Yeah. I, uh, as much as it begrudges me to say, <laughs> column A, column B. I have to say that there's there's so many awesome games out right now, and I feel overwhelmed by that. Like, I really want to... I just fall into my same old patterns, and I end up just, like, playing Red Dead or Skyrim, no matter what. <laughs> those, those two forever. And Red Dead is actually the first game in a long time that's actually successfully made me stop playing Skyrim for a significant portion of time. Wow, that's and, impressive. Because uh, you have an unhealthy obsession with that game. It just provides the... Uh, the best template for enacting whatever fantasy I'm currently um, obsessed with yeah. or, or reading or whatever. It, it provides the, the easiest template for making my own version of that. Yeah. But Red Dead's fun. And uh, I just I end up just playing the same shit and doing the same shit over and over and over again. And I'm like, I need to find new options to explore and new games to enjoy. And... Uh, you know, maybe I could find a version of the kind of fantasy I'm into that doesn't require so much of my time or is on the DS and I can take it with me somewhere. Oh, or, yes. You know, I feel like there's just so many unexplored options and I honestly don't know where to begin. Shovel Knight. And, uh... <clears throat> Shovel Knight. No, I don't know. That's, it's fun. That's, that's more of your kind of Mega Man deal. I like, uh... 
Bureau uh, doesn't like hard games. There's no roam around murder simulators on the 3DS. I'll just tell you that and we'll try it now. Uh, that's, but that's my favorite is roam around murder simulators. You're going to get it out there. All they got is good games. God damn it. <laughs> oh! I, oh! 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 Ah! I play Skyrim so that I can uh, walk down a deserted forest road and meet a passing traveler and uh, hit them with a paralyzing spell and then cave their skull in with an axe, drag them off the road, strip them naked, burn their flesh and eat it, and then Whoa. move on about my day. You can and, eat uh, it? Yes. You can eat people and scrim? All the mods he has, sure. Uh, no, it's not a mod. I All... thought you could just eat people in Fallout because it's like, oh, it's survival and it can turn you into a, a bad devil. Man. You'll get Kuru. You're going to get Kuru and it'll be root by me. You'll be laughing, but it won't be funny. <laughs> uh, you might get mad. No. Cow disease. N- Namira's ring lets you eat people. In Skyrim, the mirror's ring. Yeah. Oh, you, so you need a ring to do it. Yeah, it's a Daedric artifact mm. that you're gonna sacrifice a priest to, and then uh, eat him. Mm. And uh, delicious. So basically, I have a Richard Ramirez medieval simulator, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> actually, that'd be more Dahmer's back, but uh, still. There's nothing wrong with me. No, nothing at all is wrong with Beer Eye. Perhaps not. Out of all the time I've known you, b you've existed. Yes. Until now! Nah, I'm bored. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, last time we got rid of rid of b halfway through the episode, we had to scrap it. Yes, that's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, this is the anniversary special. Let's talk a little bit about oh, behind-the-scenes yeah. stuff. Why not? Um, for... The, the reason we had the, that hiatus... Uh, the week before last, where we were gone for like three weeks, uh, we had recorded an episode. We had recorded three in a session. B or I had to leave halfway through it, and then Taylor and I were utterly exhausted mm-hmm. and could not uh, form coherent jokes or sentences, so it was just kind of garbage. And I decided shit. not to use it at all. So there is a forbidden, cursed, lost episode of Frankenstein Control <laughs> we that put no it one the can hear of the Grand Canyon. Another uh, behind-the-scenes fact, a uh, tidbit for people. You gonna talk about the pillow? Uh, no, I have actually since... I had to, Not to jinx anything, but I haven't needed the pillow in a while. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, yeah, I usually bring a pillow in to, to cough and clear my throat into to try and <laughs> mitigate my frequency of doing that because I realized early on it was going to be a problem. Every time you pick it off the ground, there's an audible... Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no, but uh, we record these sessions... Um, on Tuesdays, which is when I have 10 hour days at work. Uh, so that's what I'm coming off of when I come at you for this. And so that's why I'm always exhausted and uh, barely coherent. And those are the Herculean lengths we go to to bring you a mediocre comedy. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was doing that when I was working there too. I had yes, the long day on Tuesdays as well. And so for that brief year. <clears throat> A year is brief. If you're as old as I am, I'm 30, remember. Mm-hmm. you old then. Uh, yeah. Um, Whereas I'm a merely a spry 29 mm-hmm. and a half. You're a spry rye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> spry rye. you always be spry. <laughs> a spry be rye. Mm-hmm. Um, as for, um, do we have any other lost content? <laughs> uh, just little bits that I've cut out that weren't very funny or got ruined by... Uh, our recording fucking up sometimes. Oh, yeah, like the time you karate kicked the microphone and it flew out the window and killed a guy? Yes. And then I had to eat him. Yes. <laughs> Good thing you had that ring on yeah, you. Yeah, the, the Ramirez ring. I like, I like to think that the Ramirez ring. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the, that ring has, uh, it's <laughs> if you closely inspect it, it's one of those rings with the bottle opener <laughs> on it. <laughs> I have one of those. I don't and know where it is. Every time you put it on, you hear a faint but audible. That's uh. <laughs> a burp. A burp. A, 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 a distant burp from Namira herself, the goddess of Belch. They call her the Belch Maiden. Mm-hmm. Can you hear the Belch? 
<laughs> well, you know, that's kind of fitting because in Oblivion, the only way you could talk to her uh, cultists was if you had a low personality. Oh. And most people didn't Oh, yeah, in Oblivion? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And most people didn't naturally have a low personality stat because why would you? It's inconvenient to play the game that way. Yeah. Uh, but certain, certain ingestibles could uh, temporarily, for like 30 seconds, reduce your uh, personality, which is long <laughs> enough to talk to them. Like a... Uh... Like a bowl of spaghetti with no pork. It was more... <laughs> uh, no, cheap wine was the easiest way to do it. Mm. So you just get shit housed on cheap wine and talk to the gross orc that ran her shrine for 30 seconds, long enough to get the quest. And then you do the quest, at which point you the game had to enable the script where you could still talk to her so that you could finish the quest. Yeah. And so that's how you got her artifact, was by uh, drinking a whole bunch of MD-2020 that you got at the uh, Wegmans wine section. <laughs> Um, Khajiit has many cheap wines. <laughs> I like to think. <laughs> so, like, yeah, you just turn into a drunken idiot, but, like, anybody could tell you're just a drunk asshole. I like to think that you're drinking this wine. <laughs> it's a magical world. Every time you, like, take a sip, you just get visibly uglier and uglier. <laughs> your hair gets messier, your clothes, like... <laughs> Have little tears and then it just appear. <laughs> See, that's why I like the, sp- the, the spaghetti with no fork because you're gonna have spaghetti stains all over your hand and face <laughs> for trying to eat it with your fingers. You're just repulsive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just sort of. Oh, that guy's disgusting. He has zero charisma. Quest time. <laughs> yep. This is just the guy we want to send to a send into a dank dungeon to have gross people in their underwear in the dark murder a bunch of priests. That's the quest. Yep. Yes. Per- perfect for someone that eats spaghetti with their fingers. You look in that. <laughs> you look in your quest log and just says spaghetti questy. <laughs> but only for as long as you're spaghettified. Your, your journal temporarily looks like an Olive Garden menu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be a great mod. <laughs> Welcome to Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. (laughs) (laughs) Saw a mud crab the other day. (laughs) Oh, that's on the menu. It's in our Scallopini Supremi. Don't ask where we get the breadsticks from. We loot them from corpses. Shit! (laughs) Be I was drinking, and now he's sprinkling. Yep. Don't get my phone wet, you feeb. I know I'm the one making you laugh, but don't get don't get water everywhere. You might you might get some on. Oh no! You woke up, you assholes! Woke me up again. I'll show you to take away my vodka. He's still wearing his costume from Men in Black. <laughs> I don't think he's taken it off in the 20 years since that movie's release. Ooh, it's more like the men in brown now, most of all. Oh, it's dirt! It's just dirt! It's not facing! Calm, calm down, calm down, Rip. What? There is an inter- intergalactic kegger going on. The intergalactic kegger! Yep, it's just outside. It's in the middle of the street. All you need to do is lay down on the ground, close your eyes, and this patient will come and take you away. Oh, well, if you say so, I He was supposed to disappear like that, right? I, I was just one, hoping he'd get run over. I'm terrified. He, he actually faded disappeared. Out of existence. There was like green sparks and everything. I he became more transparent <laughs> until he just wasn't there anymore. Does that mean we're not alone in the universe? <laughs> oh, no, no, he's just invisible. Good night, everybody. Now, even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe.